This is what 51 and single can look like. Wow! Why do they always ask, what are you looking for? Also, I spilled iced coffee. Please don't mind that, Steen. Um, I'm looking for a husband. I'm old. I'm 41. I'm obviously looking for a husband. Quick, get out. Get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the desert and welcome back to another episode of Single Mothers. And for our latest story, we'll take a look at a guy that is just stepping onto the dating scene and all the amount of money that he has wasted. It's quite interesting and there are a lot of things that can be learned. But now, gentlemen, let's not learn for now. Let's just have a laugh at these women and let's start with this piece of cake right here. Okay, let's talk dating as a single mom because this is a question that I get asked very, very frequently. Carla, how do you date as a single mom? Carla, are you dating right now? And as much tea as I'd like to give you guys, I am currently not dating, uh, but I don't know. I'm, my mindset with dating is like very, very relaxed. I kind of flip flop back and forth between wanting something serious and then wanting something fun. I don't know. It seems like a yeah translation is getting pounded by all the top 10 percentage of men that, that's what she meant there really weird topic to talk about because i'm super private when it comes to all of that i know exactly what i want and i know that i don't want to settle for anything because the way that i look at it is if i didn't settle for my kid's dad why would i settle for another man that isn't their dad i feel like now that me and the other parent are you know co-parenting here and there that I will have more time um, but I will say that even if I start dating I would keep it super private just because that's just the way that I am one thing that I do know for certain 100% is that I will never bring a man around my kids I'm just really protective of my kids and I never want to bring anyone around them that isn't gonna be in their life so yeah yeah guys she's so traditional she's so reserved you know what I mean uh, uh, by going and sleeping on with a lot of men quote-unquote for the fun now, you can do that, right? I have no problem with that. Everyone is allowed to trash their lives in their own ways. My problem is that these women, guys, they look at what she said, right? She said, I won't settle for a man who is not, you know, good for my kids, good for myself. So to the men that don't care to remember my name, I'm spreading my legs for them. But the men that, you know, I want uh, to commit, oh no, he has to play the long game, right? He has to provide... He has to take on all the responsibilities and all the problems of, uh, that come with relationships. But to, the, to these all other guys that are not moving their little finger, oh yeah, I'm going to give my kitty to them. It's just make it make sense, guys. Why will anyone commit to, to this woman when you can have the milk for free? All right? <laughs> it's just so bad, guys. Such a bad approach. But now let's move on to this other woman here that is going to share her stories as well. So I made this random goal that I would go on at least 50 dates over the summer. Um, it's just kind of a number that I pulled out because I'm always reluctant to go on dates and have probably been on two dates in, in the last year. Oh, so same as men. That, that's how many dates the average man gets. Guys, it's crazy. 50 dates in one summer. Look <laughs> at this. I tell you there, guys, who are extremely well-looking and jacked and all that, they don't have that amount of options. And this is a single mother. She's mid-40s, as she will soon enough mention. And this is the amount of dates that she has. It's just crazy. And so with this, I thought maybe I should document it and share it <laughs> so you can learn maybe from my experience with dating and uh, the disasters that I've had to, had to endure and hopefully you can learn from that. So the qualifications that I'm, I'm using for the dates, I don't really have a specific age range i keep it pretty open i've dated guys younger i'm 43 i've dated guys younger than me i've dated guys older than me it all just depends on the vibe i won't date a guy that i'm old enough to be his mom but um, i will date somebody that's a little bit younger 
also has to be somewhat educated. I have my doctorate degree, and so it, I want to be able to have some conversations with them, stable job, because I, it's something that's important to me. I have two sons, and uh, I want to make sure that if I do get involved with somebody that they're at a stable place in their life, because that's important to me and my kids. Let me just mention the whole independent thing. Now, this woman has a doctorate's degree. She's probably earning a lot of money. She doesn't need more money, but she wants more money. She wants her husband to make more than her. And she also wants him to provide. Now, this is what I tell you with the whole, oh, I'm independent. I have my own house and my own car and my own job. It's like men don't care. We're not going to see a penny out of that, all right? And we don't want to either, me personally. But, but yeah, that's the thing. They when they are independent guys, you don't see none of that. You you still you still are expected to be the traditional providing one. So I've been on two dates so far, and the first date guy was very nice, extremely educated, super intelligent, um, very successful, and. Um, seemed very stable as working for the government and things like that had a couple of businesses that he was running and but he had 13 kids yeah and i thought he was joking um when he told me that but he was not he, he was 54 years old um and had 13 kids four of which were still living uh, still under the age of 18 and so still four that I guess I would have to interact with or whatever but all of the rest were adults. That was kind of a deal breaker for me because that's um, that's a lot to kind of commit to and so that wasn't something that I wanted to continue. Very nice guy though. We have a Genghis Khan enthusiast here with 13 kids. What's the problem though? You're a single mother as well. Like, what's the matter if they are 13 or 25 or 2? What's the big deal? They're not even living with him. And he is rich and probably well-looking. I don't see the problem here, guys. Like, she has a problem with men having other kids, but you should not have a problem that she has two kids. Well, all right. Second one was married and didn't tell me until I was there. Um, he just kind of nonchalantly said that he was in the process of moving out and trying to find a place to live and then told me that he is still living with his wife but is planning on moving out. And so, of course, that is a big deal breaker for me. I will keep you posted on my third one. Yeah, so second one, not successful enough. Sorry, mate. You don't have your own house. You don't have your own car. Sorry, sorry. Uh, see you next time, right? It's crazy that at this age, with two kids and a divorce, she has these expectations. And she meets guys that, like the first one, right? He was successful, owned multiple businesses. Still not good enough, guys, for her liking. <laughs> Hilarious. But now, guys, let's move on to our last TikTok before the Reddit story. And I want you to imagine what an environmental activist looks like. All right? I want you to... Put it into your brain, put it on the big screen. Think of what a environmental activist might look like. And now see it on screen. Are you ready? Boom. Now tell me you didn't imagine her just like that. All right. We have these now. This is assumptions, but I think that she is a, an environmentalist. Uh, the, the kind of ones that uh, lay on the street to cross uh, <laughs> to close the roads. And she must be also a vegan. So uh, let's get started with her, guys, and let's see what these single mother's issues are. This is what 51 and single can look like. Oh, wow. This is me making sure that the insides are as healthy and in good shape as the outside. And what the hell is that, guys? Can someone tell me what that is? That thing on her chest? I've never seen something like this. Some uh, biotechnology here to keep her young. But let's continue. Insides appear to be. Also rectifying, uh, you know, what decades of having men in my life may have done to my body. I'm walking up to our little community's annual art fair to buy myself a piece of jewelry like I do every year on my birthday weekend. And I don't have to explain that to anybody, what my budget is, uh, why I want to do it, what I'm going to get, nothing. I spent the morning with my children getting them ready to go we actually my daughter made me birthday breakfast so that was awesome 
literally a weekend of self-care, self-love, family care, family love, without any stress, any. I just can't see myself adding any other adult person to my life that would be improving this situation. I mean, what are they gonna do? It's crazy how women will say how stressful men are, yet men are like the least stressful creatures on earth. Like, men don't like the drama at all. And you see this with male friendships, right? There oftentimes is no drama. Yes, eventually you may throw a few punches with your friends, but things are resolved quickly, no problems at all. Women don't spend, uh, women spend not talking to each other three years, all right? Women are constantly in drama, a lot of fake friends that talk gossip behind their backs. And we must be out here pretending that men are the drama queens. It's got nothing to do with that. Also, she says, how will a man improve my life, right? This is the theme of the video. She speaks about that all the time. Well, I gotta ask you the same question, guys, all right? I want you to think of one activity you did today that this woman will enhance. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me one thing that you did today that will be better if she was around. All right, I'll, I'll wait for that. What would they do to make this better? Would they be asking me to help them do something or having me justify why I'm doing what I'm doing? Because that's not better. Would a man join me at the art fair? Hell no. Through it, having a great time and saying how um, appreciative he was that, you know, he got to join me in an event like that. Yeah, because that's absolutely what a man will say. Oh, honey, I'm so glad you took me to the art fair. I'm so appreciative of you. That's the words of literally every man who is taken to an art fair. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just simply don't get the point here. Why do we have to like art fairs? They're, they're, for me, they're extremely boring, right? And I don't know, w would you be entertained if we took you to a, I don't know, truck race or something like that? You probably wouldn't, right? Like, why do we have to have the same interests? I really don't get it. Or would he be like the Costco men that are like, 0% want to be here? I just don't feel like I want to be dragging somebody somewhere to do the things that I love to do. And then I don't. absolutely can be in my own space. And I'll probably run into some friends and neighbors down here. But other than that, just stay in my own space and enjoy the day. My appreciation for all of the art that I'm about to see and how long I want to stay in that booth and look at it and talk to the artist and examine things and try things on is all mine. It's all mine. I'm so excited and happy after so many years of either not going, not participating, or going, but going to only the parts that somebody else was okay with. All right, so here we learn an interesting part of the story, which apparently this man, whenever there was an art fair in town, he locked her in the basement, all right? And she told him, please, I want to go. And he said, no, you're not going to go. You're not going to do that. And he locked and threw away the key, apparently, because this woman was banned from going to art exhibits uh, when she had a husband, apparently. All right. That they weren't bored about, that I didn't have to justify, or it was too expensive, or, you know, whatever, or, or, or. I look younger now than I did 10 years ago when I was suffering and knew I needed to leave, that my life actually depended on it. I yeah, so this is why she got a divorce. Right? Because the grass is always greener, because husbands are annoying with their demands, which men have two demands. They like to eat and they like to F. That's what men want. They don't really don't want anything else. All right. Women are the ones that have a list of 500 demands, like stupid art exhibits, that they want you to go and appreciate, even though you probably don't like them and find them extremely boring. Like most men, she says, oh, Costco. Yes, we are painfully bored to go with you, with you looking for clothes. It's extremely boring, Isaac. Does someone enjoy it? And there's no problem if you enjoy it. It just ha so happens that most men don't. We don't like to go there for three hours looking at clothes. It's so un uninteresting. What do you expect us, man? It's like, geez, allow men to be men. We have different interests. This woman expects us and her ex-husband to have all the interests that she has because she wants to share her life in this way. Well, I'll tell you what, when your man gets back from work, he, he doesn't want to yap for two hours uh, about his day, all right? He just wants to sit on his butt, 
crack a cold one open and watch football or, or TV or something. That's what he enjoys. He doesn't expect you to be the same. And he, he doesn't like it when you are yapping three hours into his ear about that one um, conversation you had with Dave at work that really wasn't that amusing. He doesn't like that, but he probably did because he cares about you and he loves you. Yet you have a problem with doing the same thing for him, right? I mean, guys, this is like with kids. When kids um, make a drawing about something and some scribblings there, it's trash, right? It's just trash. Its artistic value is zero, but it's your kid, so you're happy, right? You say, oh, wow, that's amazing. I'm going to put it on the fridge. That's what you do when you love someone. And you like the picture, not because the picture has any value, but because it makes the other person happy. And it's the same with marriage. You don't have to necessarily like all the things that they do. You just find some common ground. You find the you know, healthy middle where you don't get to go through art exhibits for six hours, uh, but she also doesn't get to go alone. You go with her and stuff like that, you know. But this woman, guys, understands nothing about that. This is the type of woman that is so self-absorbed and wants, wants everything to be revolving around her, the whole universe. And if it doesn't, she'll get a divorce from you. Reason for divorce, uh, this man wasn't literally me and didn't appeal to all my needs disgusting didn't know so much at the time until i left how young i really am how healthy i really am how mentally stable i really am as long as i focus on me that includes my priorities which are my children and my career and my home my friends and family and zero other people's desire for me to put myself second for their adult needs or wants i take care of my own adult needs and wants so I'm certain that there is a human being out there that could actually absolutely make this day better. Uh, that's Not an really. invitation, but I just don't see it as likely. Not really, madam. If you think that it's possible to please you, let me tell you it's not. It's impossible, guys, to please, the, uh, please these women. And this is why you should not even date, uh, deal with them. Because they're just going to divorce you the moment you don't appeal to their stupid needs. The moment that happens... They'll just get out. It's like a parasite, you know? They, they stay with the host when it interests them. When it doesn't interest them, uh, the host dies and they just move on. Just like this woman. And I'm not really looking. I am not really interested in the effort that it might take to hoop jump through the part where we know whether or not it's going to be great. Just don't. So after today, I will be more sunned. I will actually be younger than I was when I left the house. And she doesn't look obsessed with looking younger at all, eh, guys? It doesn't seem like it. She's not obsessed with her youth vanishing at all. <laughs> nah, we'll leave this uh, environmental activist in the past, guys. Uh, let her be happy with her seven cats, her box wine, and her art ex exhibits, all right? She's happy with that. She's so, in so enthusiastic. Uh, and she doesn't deserve to be with another person, to be honest with you guys, because relationships just happen to be, a, a, you know, between two people, not be between one people, uh, excuse me, between one person who is a parasite and another just, that just happens to be the host. All right, but this is the mentality that a lot of women share today. They feel like they are the prize and they make it look like men are so, uh, men with their thousand demands. No, men want to get between your legs uh, three, four times a week. And that's it. Like, that's really it. And for you to not be too much of a pain in the back. That's what men want. Nothing more. All right. Don't make it look like we have 4,000 demands. Now, guys, enough about this woman. As I said, let's switch on to our article story, which is a guy in his, uh, his 22 and he's sharing his experience. Dating is expensive and exhausting. Welcome to the club. Perspective of a 22 year old college student. I've recently started dating at around December of last year and I wanted to give my perspective of things and how it has been going on as lately. My last long-term relationship was around 2019 pre-COVID and it unfortunately ended due to the pandemic, family issues, moving to a different state and all sorts of cluster fudge that happened all at once. Also, due to online community college, making both friends and dating kind of stopped during this time. So, we were, we were all there. For people talking about the modern dating scene and how much of a mess it is for both genders, I started to understand why this is the case. A lot of my friends, female and male alike, have expressed their dissatisfaction of the current dating market. It's, it, it, now yes, women, they, they like to complain. 
But their game is so much easier than the male game, right? It's so much easier. They have their own struggles, their own difficulties. But guys, come on, like, I'm not even saying this to cope, all right? You know this to be true. It's just so much easier for them. I didn't know at first why people have been complaining about it until sometime around this year. A lot of times it really does feel like if I don't magically check off all the boxes in the person I'm pursuing, that person decides they can just move on to the next person, so on and so forth. Yeah, because that's what women do. If you're not top 10 percentage of guy, they move on. That's not something that men do, that's something that strictly women do, right? Ghosting, flaking is just so common nowadays. It's so exhausting. Either when you're planning to go uh, to a first date, that person cancels or is a no-show. Or after the first date, that person ju just completely ghosts you without any closure. Describing myself to start off, I'm not here to brag about myself. I just want to know if anybody is or have similar experiences and see if my current self holds up to the standards to the people I'm trying to date. I think I'm a reasonably decent looking guy. Average hate... Uh, Height, excuse me, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, muscular, athletic, has a skincare routine, goes to the gym pretty frequently, have a couple of hobbies I'm super into, tech, martial arts, that's so cool. Uh, boxing, taekwondo, MMA, staff, volunteering, uh, excuse me, MMA staff, volunteering, looking into joining a running club sometime this year, currently a nursing student that will hopefully graduate within the next year. Goes out pretty frequently, out for runs, errands for friends and family, out to study, etc., Occasionally it goes out, uh, goes out to bars and clubs maybe two, three times per month during the weekends. Not really into smoking, vaping. Works in healthcare as a CNA. Joined university sports clubs, cooks. Aspiration to become a healthcare provider one day. Plan to get experience in med search, set, uh, settling for a couple of years. Looking to travel, pick up new hobbies such as bartending. Learn BGG, don't know what that is, uh, BGG. We learn Korean again. Currently a whitewashed Asian. Learned digital art, wanting to have my first MMA fight within the next decade or so. Finally, I don't think I'm an, I'm an a-hole. So look at this guy, right? And he's 22. Look at all the things he's doing. He's making full use of his time. Now, this man that is doing all those things is getting dismissed by women who their biggest achievement in life is having 200 likes on a TikTok post. Like, it really is that way, guys. These women are not doing anything with their lives. They're in some high school, most of them, right? They're, oh, university. That is their biggest achievement, guys. A university degree in uh, gender studies or something like that. That is their biggest achievement in life. They've done nothing more. And these are the women that are dismissing guys like this, who have been working their behind of. Welcome to Dating 2024. Now, also, this is the type of man that a century back, uh, parents would recommend this guy to their daughters, right? Like, oh, you take a look at uh, Dave over here. He, he, he will make for a really good husband. Nowadays, you don't get crap for all that. <laughs> and here he has, uh, we're not going to read all of this. You can pause and read, but I'm just going to read how his dates ended and the amount of money he spent. So first date, it, it ends with after a couple days later, Date takes text saying it's better if both of us meet other people. So nothing happened. And he spent 10 to 15 dollars. Second date. Uh, date said that I moved at a fast pace and that it didn't work out. 60 dollars wasted. Third date. Uh, it ends with date agrees for a second date, gives a hug and blows kiss, then drives away. So he spent 150 dollars on that date. The second date. Uh, date says we should just be friends was devastated since I thought she was the one texted her asking if she could just call and walk things out says she could just text me and says I should just move on felt like she handled it in a very insensitive manner $100 so this guy spent $250 on a woman that in the end didn't work out right and she just dismissed him like all the, all the other fourth date let's take a listen gentlemen uh, so the date was sick, uh, for the first date or something. Uh, then she says that she's looking for something casual. And he totally spent close to $150. And on the second date, actually, we read here, after the date, we talked about what we want in life, how we could do better, deep stuff. Date says she might be bi. Massive red flag with a capital M. Massive red flag, guys. I tell you what, don't deal 
with women who can't even pick their, their sexuality. If you're that lost in life that you don't even know what you are and what you might be, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you just avoid these people at all costs, all right, it is my advice. And also these people that are part of the, you know, rainbow friends, they are the ones who often end in, uh, if they're not gay or lesbian and they end up in a couple with another gay or lesbian, if they are any other thing, they are often the ones that if they end up in a marriage, they want to open it, right? So again, guys, just avoid them at all costs. These people don't deserve your time. Uh, fifth date. There's a lot of text here. Uh, date takes multiple days to respond with one sentence responses after the first date. After the final text saying she may be available for Sunday, date does not reach back out and, and hasn't texted back within three days. So the, coastal, uh, the total cost of dealing with this woman, $110. Uh, fourth one, uh, she didn't show up, he hints here. Uh, talking phase lasted six weeks, claiming that she's super busy. Yeah, she didn't care at all. Uh, after one week of being delivered, date reaches out. Uh, sees if she will text first once, never did. So this one just uh, ignored him and he spent $150 to $200 on that. Right. I, I'm not going to go through it again, but you can sum up all the dollars that he, this guy spent. He probably spent uh, close to $1,500 for going on these dates. We, uh, remind you, with the modern and independent ladies that need no men, yet he's the one paying. Okay, if you think about that, that's crazy, guys. $1,500 for nothing. I don't even know if he messed up with these women, uh, but you can see why men just want that, right? Men, they don't want to pay no more. They just want to get between their pants <laughs> and that's it. Because the commitment is not going to happen. These women don't respect you. Even if they want commitment, they probably don't deserve it. And a massive walking red flags. So that's the game for men. Try to get between their legs, paying the least amount of money possible. And the game for women is the opposite. Trying to get the most resources, the most money, the most attention, the most validation uh, without spreading their legs. Right? That's the game nowadays. It cannot work otherwise, at least on the dating apps. And don't be like this guy. All right? He, he wasted $1,500 for literally nothing. And he ends with, I'm really tired of dating. It's just so expensive and time consuming. Not to mention the amount of toll it's taking onto my mental state. That's a really important aspect as well. What's funny is that my confidence and mental health started dropping even more after going on dates and getting a lot of matches. The, the confidence aspect is really important. Like as a man, again, you em emphasize on how many things this guy is doing, all right? He, he is a guy above the standard. He's doing so many things. There are so many men that just sit on their butts uh, watching Instagram all day. So this guy is doing a lot with his life and it's still taking a hit on his confidence, right? He's not six feet tall. Maybe he, I mean, he goes to the gym, so he has a good body. Maybe in the face department, he's not as good as the other guys. Because otherwise, these women wouldn't be dismissing him, <laughs> all right? If he was attractive, uh, they, they will be absolutely hooking up with him. Uh, but there's that. And it's taking a hit on his confidence. Uh, confidence and mental health started dropping even more after going on dates and getting a lot of matches. I'm hoping I could find someone I like and stick with that person for the long term up until marriage. I feel like I've done everything I can in my dates, but I feel like if I make a tiny little mistake on that date, it's a no for the other person. And we'll end on that thought, gentlemen. Uh, quite disgusting, the dating scene. I tell you what, guys, my advice is don't even touch it with a 10-foot pole. Do something better with your life. And if a woman notices you for who you are and for what you achieve and for what you provide and what kind of man you can be, that's great. But if a woman just wants to leech off of your resources and be a parasite, you're better off alone, is my take. But guys, leave me yours down in the comments below, and I'll be happy to see you next time. Have a good one.